Hi, Brian Thrift here on the Potomac River, and I'm gonna show you some tips and tactics for the four inch Demiki Stinger. This was my key bait this year to help me win Angler of the Year. I caught them in four of the seven tournaments we had on the FLW season this year on this exact bait right here. So hang around, check out what I've got to show you. <laughs> Pulled up to a grass flat here on the Potomac River. You can see all the scattered clumps out here. And I know this area has been heavily pressured all week. There's been 160 pros, 160 co-anglers out here beating this flat up. The fish are very pressured. That's when I pick up this four inch Demiki Stinger. I've got it on 10 pound P-line fluorocarbon. And what I like to do with it, you, as I said, you can see all the clumps of grass. I'll find four or five clumps that are pretty tight together that have a hole around them. You want that void. And I throw this thing out there and I just kind of dead stick it. Let it set on the bottom 10 or 15 seconds. And if one's there, he's gonna bite it pretty quick. Then I wind it in, make another cast, and repeat the whole process. When I'm throwing the Demiki Stinger like this, this, I'm gonna show you the setup I like to use. Right now I've got it on a four alt owner all-purpose worm hook and I've got it Texas rigged with no weight and a lot of people would ask well why, why don't you wacky rig it and the thing about that is when I'm wanting to make super long cast I always Texas rig it with this hook because the baits more streamlined when you cast you can cast it so much farther than you can wacky rigged but when I do wacky rig it I go with a one alt Demiki Viper hook and I just hook the bait right in the middle and just let it free fall. I free fall it with both techniques. Right now, I'm throwing it on a 10 pound P-line tactical fluorocarbon. I've got 20 pound P-line TCBX braid on here. And this is a 610 Fitzgerald medium heavy stunner spinning rod, or excuse me, versus spinning rod. Three of the main colors that I use, I, I don't really vary much. I don't like to carry 40 different colors of each bait. So these are my three top choices for the four inch stinger. I've got a green pumpkin magic, I've got a water, or a, excuse me, a baby bass, and then I've got the green pumpkin purple here. I feel like that covers me in every situation from slightly stained water to super clear water to water with, you know, two or three feet of visibility. That's what I want because I'm, I'm not going to throw this bait in muddy water. To me, this is a clear water, highly pressured finesse type bait, and these three cover, colors will cover every application I need for it. And one of the things I like to do with this bait is fishermen are notorious for having way too much tackle, so storage becomes an issue. I always take these baits, I take a little quart size Ziploc bag, and I'll put five or six packs of there in one of these bags. That way I've got easy access to it. I've got a lot of baits that I can get to quickly, and it doesn't take up much room in the boat. What makes this bait so effective on pressured situation is the fact that it does nothing. It falls real slow. It falls about half the speed of other stick baits on the market. And it, I feel like you get a lot more bites because of that. I've got it on 20 pound P-line TCBF braid, and I've got about an eight foot liter of 10 pound P-line tactical, which is an awesome new fluorocarbon they came out with this year. That setup allows me to make long casts to get the bait <clears throat> as far away from the boat as I can because when you're in these grass flats, you can see all these other boats out here. That's trolling motor noise, depth finder noise. So you want those fish to not know you're around. So that's what I'll do with this setup. It's a 610 Fitzgerald versus spinning rod. And you can just throw this thing a mile, as you can see here. I mean, you can get that little four inch lightweight bait way out there and get it away from the boat to those fish that don't know you're around. And that's a part of the game out here on the Potomac. You've got to be stealthy and try to get the fish, bait to the fish without them knowing you're there. You know, this is the, the second time I've came to the Potomac River leading angler of the year. The first time was in 2015. I had a, I think a 30 point lead over yours truly, my buddy Scott Martin. He ended up taking the title away from me. I mean, he just flat beat me. I had a bad tournament. so. Out here in 2017, I, I was determined not to beat myself again on the Potomac River. So I found a little group of fish. It was hard to get them to bite. And 
The second day, the, well, let me back up to the first day of the tournament. First day of the tournament, I kind of struggled. I caught 14 pounds. I thought I was going to be in good shape. Found myself all the way down in 67th after the first day. I only caught six keepers all day. So the second day, I'm sitting there before blast off at the dock in the morning. I've got all my rods out, my air crawl, my chatter baits, my frogs and stuff that I threw the first day and only caught six keepers on. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, what can I do different to, to make sure today's not a struggle like the first day was? So I open the rod box, I get my Fitzgerald spinning rod out, and I go and tie on my confidence bait, the little four inch Domeki Stinger I talked about earlier. And I went in the same area I fished the first day and caught two keepers. And in a matter of an hour and a half, I caught 15 pounds and cold seven or eight times. So it's just having confidence out on the water and to be able to accomplish that so early in the morning, it, it turned the second day of the event into a great day for me. I wasn't mad, you know, I'm fishing happy all day, all because of that little key bait change, just being subtle and stealthy. And everybody thinks that, you know, if you're gonna catch big fish, oh, you've got to throw these huge baits, you've got to have big line. But when you get in a pressured situation like we've had here, man, you can downsize, throw small weightless baits that make little noise, have little action, and you can catch those same big fish. That's probably my number one tournament tip that I can offer anybody out there is don't be scared to downsize because if there's big fish in an area, in a lake, your home lake, don't be scared to throw something small. If the big fish live there, they'll still bite it. All right, I've pulled in this bay here to the Potomac River. The grass looks right. It's got the right spacing, the right amount of holes in it. We've got bait fish jumping around. And I mentioned earlier how you want to be stealthy. So when I get in an area like this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put my power poles down where I can thoroughly saturate everything I want to fish without spooking the bass. So I'm going to go ahead and put the power poles down. And I'm gonna stay right here for 15 or 20 minutes just making repetitive casts, just in a circle all the way around the boat, spacing them out every four or five feet to make sure I hit every hole, every pocket in this huge grass flat. Then I'm gonna pick my poles up, I'm gonna move up to the end of my cast and repeat the process over. So that way, when I'm done fishing this area, I know I've covered every square inch of it that I possibly can and my bait's been in front of every bass here and hopefully we're gonna catch all of them. <laughs> Throwing the Domeki Stinger like I am, there's there's several different ways I like to work it. I mean, like I said, it's a year-round bait, and it's one of the key reasons that I won Angler of the Year this year. I mean, I've caught them at Harris Chain on it, dead sticking it in the pads. It's great for that when you've got fish spawning that are, that are there, you know, but are lethargic. They don't want to bite, but if you leave that thing laying in their face, a lot of times they'll bite it. You just rig it up with an eighth ounce weight, pitch it in there and just kind of let it set for a little while, maybe move it a little bit. And another thing I like to do with it is post spawn, especially if you're on a lake that's got a lot of docks and the fish hide under those shades lines and stuff like that. I like to take this bait and wacky rig it, skip it under docks, and those fish that are under there feeding on bluegills, maybe fish that are left over from a late shad spawn or something like that, that are sitting there and you can visually see them, but a lot of times you, you can't figure out how to catch them. You might skip a jig under there and the fish run off or don't even pay it any attention. But you skip something like this soft stick bait with no weight that's gonna fall real slow. A lot of those times those fish will just swim over there and slurp it in. I mean, it's like a, they don't wanna eat it, but it's so easy to eat. They'll go ahead and commit to it and come over there and eat it. That's probably my two favorite ways to fish this bait. And another one is actually flipping it. I mean, put it on a quarter to a half ounce weight and flip grass with it, you know, if you've got a tough bite. So there's really, the options are endless as to what you can do with it. And I haven't figured out all the ways to catch them on it, but I'm slowly learning and it's definitely my go-to bait right now. Another one of the great tips for throwing soft weightless baits like this is be conscious of the wind. You can see here, I've got the wind coming from my back. This is a weightless bait, it's real light, so your line's not gonna fall fast. And the wind can blow your line around. If you try to throw across the wind, you've got a huge bow in your line. You're not gonna be able to notice the bite. But if I set up on this grass flat and fish straight in front of the boat with the wind in my back, 
I can, it kind of, you use the boat to block the wind off your line where it lays straight on the water. You can see what your bait's doing. You can see if a fish picks it up while it's laying there still. And that's a huge help when you're doing this in a windy situation. Oh, there's one there. Oh, he got the grass on him. That's why you use braid right there. <laughs> four inch wasteless soft bait out here on the Potomac River. Remember the braid with the leader, guys. Don't think you've gotta have 20 pound line to catch fish in this heavy grass. Got the 10 pound fluorocarbon on here. Drag them out of the back grass every time. Don't worry about it. If they bog up, just go get them. Thanks for watching the show. Check back next time, see what we got next. Thank you.